So where, where does the scene start? Where's our location shift? Ellie? Good, so we're now in Macbeth's castle. I will show you a map, um, possibly next lesson, if someone reminds me, of where the different locations are in Scotland, because you, you can actually plot them. And the closer you are to Duncan's castle, the more power and authority you have, the higher your status. So the location corridor is closer to Duncan's castle than Inverness. Inverness is literally on the other side of Scotland, so he's, he's kind of, he's a little bit further away. Okay, so we're just in a room in the castle. So we've gone out. So we've gone from outside to inside. So this is the Lady Macbeth. Okay, and this is where she analyzes his character. So at the top of the page that you've got on a post-it note or anything like that. Okay, this this part with her is where she's analyzing her husband's character. And what is interesting is that we learn about her husband based on what she thinks of him. Okay, and what I want us to think about is are they in some cases on the same page? Is she thinking of stuff that kind of he already has? Does she think he's capable of thinking of stuff even though we know he already has? And what does that actually tell us about their relationship? The impression that we get a lot about Lady Macbeth and Macbeth and through a huge amount of adaptions and films and things like that is that the two of them are like two peas in a pod. And there is language in here that would suggest that that is Macbeth's version and impression of his wife. But before we go anywhere, can you very, very quickly tell me what is the role of the female in Jacobean and or Elizabethan and Jacobean England? Ella. Stay at home and look after the Good. Stay at home, look after the house. Has she ticked that box? Where is she? She's at home. He's off fighting. She's at home. What else is the role of the female? Dom? Have children. Have kids. There's evidence in here. That's tricky and again this whole child thing so there's another opportunity for you to index the child thing as we know stretches throughout the play ellie do whatever the man good obedience possibly something that we can index again but it's mainly in the first sort of half or sort of first sort of acts if you will of the play simply because of Macbeth isn't king at the moment but there is that element of obedience and the language that he uses implies that they are breaking that mold so not only have we got a subject of the king who's already using the word murder, it's the first time that word is used in the play, he is then breaking the social expectations and rules of how men and women need to be together. And we'll find that language in here. She shouldn't be equal to him. She's a woman, for goodness sake. And yet he already is disobeying that standard. So for us as an audience, we're like, nah. okay, so he's not just sort of black and white here. There is some kind of deviant behaviour. There's sort of kind of a rebel social rebellion cracking on here. That's not, that doesn't really sit very well. We don't really agree with it. She's got more power than she deserves. I was going to say also the fact that she's reading because usually women are telling you. Yes, yeah, so if you are a woman of, of authority, a woman of a status, you, you, you can read. But what are you not allowed to do? Do any writing, but what writing can you do, Will? Oh, yeah, religious stuff or stuff that your husband says is okay. Yeah, so there's a significant disparity in terms of what society is expecting men and women to be in their nature of the relationship and kind of what we have here. So kind of, let's start talking about all the hot air around that and actually let's crack on. She says, and she's reading a letter, okay? These are not her words. These are Macbeth's words, and that's important for you to acknowledge. These are Macbeth's words she is now revealing and sharing with us. So this part is not quite a soliloquy. She's reading Macbeth's words, more of Macbeth's words inside his head. They met me in the day of success, and I have learnt by the perfectest report that they have more in them than mortal knowledge. Who's they? Well, good. Mortal knowledge? Should be fairly obvious. Like human Normal human knowledge, good healthy quality, you know, God abiding, you know, stuff. When I burned in desire to question them further, where can you cross reference that to? Find the line, cross, make your own cross referencing here. They made themselves in air into which they vanished. 
While as I stood wrapped in the wonder of it came missus from the king, who all hailed me, Thain of Cordor, by which title before these weird sisters saluted me and referred me to the coming on of time with hail, king that shalt be. This is now a retelling from his point of view what we think we saw, Act 1, Scene 2. No, Act 1, Scene 3. Okay? So this is Macbeth's point of view of what we saw, Act 1, Scene 3. So words like burning in desire. That's what he was feeling. That's what he was thinking when he said, speak you imperfect something, something. Okay? So this is the private... We saw the public. This is where we have a disparity between the information coming through. Okay? And while I stood and wrapped it in wonder of it, that proves we were right. He is completely in awe of what they were saying. He's lost in his internal thoughts. It's amazing. I'm going to be keen. Oh, my God. Okay? And then he's like, and they saluted me. Not welcomed me, saluted me. So he's, he's using military language, language of status and authority, to describe the way the witches spoke to him. This have I thought good to deliver thee, my dearest partner of greatness, that thou mightst not lose the dues of rejoicing by being ignorant of what greatest has promised thee. So he's saying, I don't want you to lose out in the joy and the celebration of what I know. I want to share it with you because you are my dearest partner of greatness. Okay, partner. Why might we have a problem with that? Remember who we are. We're at near Elizabethan and Jacobean order. It's 1606, why might we have a problem with that? Is he? Uh, like, Absolutely. He's making her seem equal to him. That diminishes his status, okay? It emasculates him and increases hers. That's just wrong, okay? Men shouldn't go down. Women shouldn't go up. It doesn't work like that, okay? And then we've got greatness. Greatness in terms of their sense of power, their sense of control, their sense of authority, possibly their sense of corruptness about where this is going. Then he says it here, lay it to thy heart and farewell. What is he implying with that? Lay it to thy heart. Is he saying, roll up the banners, let's have a party? Or what might lay it to your heart be? Will? Keep it close. Keep it close inside and I'll see you later. Okay, keep it close. Why do they need to keep this kind of information close? Where has the information come from? Miles? Nope. Where has the information come from? It's come from the witches. You cannot think about what time we are. You cannot start proclaiming, I'm going to be king because I was told by the witches. You start making that public and certainly shouting that from the top of the rooftops, what's going to happen? Dan? You're going to be accused of collusion with the witches and therefore you're going to be dunked, hung and then burnt. That's probably not the best choice. Okay? So this is where Shakespeare is acknowledging, slight nod to James, that actually people do collude with witchcraft and our potential king, the namesayer of this play, has done that himself and he's keeping a secret. Another thing with secrets, what has he not told her? He's not told her everything, has he? What has he refused to share with her? Will? Banquet children. children. If they are so much partners, why is he keeping stuff from her? Ellie? Because he knows that means she might be on children. Possibly. I don't think he cares that much. 